Hi, everybody. So here we are a week after the AES show in New York. Avid just introduced the Pro Tools 10 software and the brand new HDX systems. There's a lot of things to talk about with this, and the HDX systems themselves won't be out till about mid to late November. So let's start off by taking a look at the new features in Pro Tools 10. So here's the Pro Tools 10 software. Right off the bat, you can see that there's a few new things that didn't exist in Pro Tools 9. Primarily down here in the bit depth area, we now support 32-bit floating point audio files, as well as full stereo interleaved audio files. This was a huge request by a lot of you users out there. All right, so let's go ahead and open up a session. All right, so right off the bat, you can see that it doesn't look much different than Pro Tools 9. There are a few obvious clues right off the bat that you're dealing with Pro Tools 10. Primarily here, you'll notice what used to be called the Regions bin is now called the Clips bin, as well as the menu here that used to be called Regions is now also called Clip. All media in Pro Tools 10 and from now on will all be referred to as Clips, whether they're video clips, audio clips, MIDI clips, just get used to the new terminology. Another really great new feature inside of Pro Tools 10 is the addition of the Avid Channel Strip. This plugin came directly from the Euphonic System 5 consoles that are also made by Avid. They simply just took the entire Dynamics and EQ section out of the console and put it into Pro Tools. This comes with every version of Pro Tools, whether you're running native or HD. This is a full feature channel strip plugin that lets you actually change the order of processing between EQs, filters, and Dynamics. So you can go between different settings and how you'd like the signal flow to happen. You have a full compressor limiter, expander gate, sidechain input, and on the EQ section you have full filters as well as a, as a parametric EQs with low frequencies, low mids, high mids, high frequencies, and your two filters. Now you can simply, like a lot of Avid plugins, you can simply just click and drag to start making changes, whether it's on the EQ section, and then simply just start changing parameters within your uh, dynamic section to start manipulating the settings. Now, this is a fairly interesting plugin, like I said, because it comes straight from the console. This is the same sound that high level professional engineers have within the System 5 console. Another really great feature of Pro Tools 10 is the addition of clip based gains. Clip based gains come at us from the video world, and the terminology carries over from the video side, such as Avid Media Composer. But it's a great, great feature in Pro Tools to help you with uh, your mixes and your automation. To view clip based gains, you just go up to the View menu under Clip, and you have Clip Gain Line and Clip Gain Info. You can see across the actual audio clip the solid black line that is a clip gain line and the info is right here when you click on it it actually gives you a little mini fader to show you what level it's at. Now you can increase the clip gain of each individual audio clip by up to 36 dB. In order to utilize clip based gains you can do a couple of different things. First of all if you want to affect the entire audio clip you can click on the mini fader and bring up or down the clip based gain. Now notice as I do this, you actually see the waveform visually increase or decrease in amplitude. The really important thing to remember about this is that it's actually affecting the audio signal pre-insert, meaning whatever you do here automatically affects how much audio level is hitting your plugins, such as the Avid Channel Strip. Now to kind of demonstrate this, let's go ahead and just play this back. Notice the levels that are coming into our input here. If I increase my clip base gain, notice the levels now. This can be a very, very handy mix tool. Yet another handy implementation in Pro Tools 10 is the advancements in, in using Audio Suite plugins. For many of you, you know that if you use Audio Suite plugins, generally you can only have one open at a time. But now with Pro Tools 10, Avid has introduced a target icon, just like in a traditional insert, where you can untarget the Audio Suite plugin and open up another one, so that way you can have multiple open on screen at the same time. This has been really handy for a lot of people, especially guys in post production or anybody that's actually doing multiple Audio Suite processes. And this can also be saved as part of your Windows configuration set. 
There's also a couple of other features that a lot of you users out there are going to find very helpful. One of the things is that now there's a marketplace menu. You can actually buy plugins directly from Avid by going to the marketplace menu, selecting plugins. It's going to ask you to sign into your account as it always does. But from here you can actually choose different things and as Pro Tools 10 evolves we'll see more and more things within the marketplace. Notice if I click on Pro Tools Sound Processing Plugins, it'll actually take me to the store that has all the different things that are available for purchase. Like I said, this is going to be a very handy tool in the, in the future as we keep on adding more and more functionality to this and more and more third-party developers come on board with this. You'll be able to get plugins directly into Pro Tools from within Pro Tools. It's a handy little feature. Also, Another really great thing that a lot of users have been asking for is direct support for SoundCloud and iTunes. If, if you go to your file menu, go down to Bounce to Disk, when you choose to do a bounce, you now have the option of adding to the iTunes library directly and sharing with your SoundCloud account. SoundCloud is a great service, it's free to sign up, and a lot of different people are on SoundCloud. It's a great way to share your music with the world. Another easy way to access your SoundCloud account is to go to the Setup menu, connect to SoundCloud, and then you just type in your email logon and password. If you don't have a SoundCloud account, it'll even let you sign up right here within this window. Once again, it's just another easy feature that's implemented in Pro Tools 10 that a lot of users have been asking for. There's still yet more things that are going on within Pro Tools 10. One of the main things, and we discussed this at the beginning, is the ability to support 32-bit floating point audio files. Well, it actually goes a little beyond that. If you go to your setup menu and look at your session setup window, in the past it was a set bit depth and sample rate based on what you first created the session in. Now what you can actually do is you can actually change the bit depth on the fly. It won't change anything you've previously recorded, but anything from this point forward will be recorded at the new bit depth. This is due to the fact that Pro Tools can support multiple file types of different kinds of bit depths all at the same time in the same session. This is actually a huge step forward and it's one of the biggest technological changes that you'll see in the background. But it'll work seamlessly within the session. It'll appear like nothing is actually happening. But there's a lot of stuff going on in the background in order to facilitate this. And also, the ability to support interleaved files can be turned on and off from here as well, regardless of what you did at the beginning when you started the session. As you can tell already, there's a lot of different things going on in the background. There's a lot of changes that have happened to Pro Tools. It looks pretty much the same. There's not a lot of visual differences. And also, there's not really a whole bunch of differences on the musicality side of it. Things such as MIDI have been left alone and have just carried over from Pro Tools 9. But there's a slew of different things going on in the background, a lot of them primarily aimed at speed and performance. So stay tuned with us. We're going to have a whole series of videos on all these new features and as well as the new HDX systems when those can become available within about a month or so.